February has been all about relationships and the journey to conception is in a lot of cases the natural next step in a committed relationship. And with me to talk about her journey is Lisa Lee Alade Komo, a financial and strategy expert who has been married for six years and with her husband are still walking their journey to becoming parents. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So let's delve right into it. This thing called trying to become a parent. Mm -hmm. It isn't always as easy as it seems. And from our two speakers, mm -hmm. we've heard all the different challenges, the family pressure. We've heard about the male for infertility and the yep. female infertility. Yep. And now I wanted to hear from your point of view, because I know that you are on the journey. Yes. So my first question would be, when you got married, did you and your husband plan to start having children immediately? Um, when we got married, we actually got pregnant immediately. Okay. So right after we got married, a couple months, three, four months, and we were um, expecting a baby. And... Um, we were happy, we did mm. everything we're supposed to do. Mm. And at four months, we lost our baby. So that's where this new journey of infertility started, basically. So having come out of that, we were mm. like, what's the next step, what's the next step, what's the next step? Mm. And here we are six years mm. later. Mm. So you lost that baby at four months. Yep. How did you feel? How did oh. you both feel? Oh, it was gut-wrenching. It was, it, was, it was dramatic. It was like a very, very dramatic experience. <clears throat> in the sense that we were, we were in New York, we were away from home. We didn't have our support system. We didn't even know what to do. We hadn't experienced this before. We're new parents. So the whole experience was traumatic, to say the least. Mm. We were in a foreign hospital, um, completely traumatic. And then we had to come back to Nigeria, and we just announced actually, we just started telling people, because it was at the th past three past months, the first you know, trimester. past first trimester, so yeah. we're now telling people like, oh, we're expecting a baby, we're expecting a baby, and the weekend after the announcement, we lost our baby. Mm. So that was, that was very traumatic for us. Mm. Um, but, you know, we're, we're very practical people, we're like, okay, it's done, what do we do? Thank God for the opportunity for actually being pregnant, you know, so we know mm. we can do it. And let's, mm. let's move on to the next thing, mm. which is trying again to have a baby. Mm. So you see, those are two, there are two things you've just said there that is slightly uncommon. One, you're very practical people. So mm -hmm. it's more about what's next. Mm -hmm. And then gratitude. At least you got pregnant. Yeah. You know, so you know that that is possible. Yeah. And your focus was on to, was to go on to the next step. Yeah, go on to the so next step. So how many, what happened then? How many procedures did you do? You so know? I think it started, it started gradually. So at, at first we thought it was fibroids because I have fibroids. A lot of black women have fibroids. A lot of black women, yeah. Yeah, so I thought fibroids. So let's try to get the fibroids out. Let's try to shrink the fibroids. So we went through the process of shrinking fibroids through some, uh, through a drug I got from my doctor in the UK. And after that, we, we started trying again, and it just took longer to happen. Mm. It didn't happen as fast as we expected. So after that, we said, okay, let's try the next mild step. So like um, Dr. Ajayi was saying earlier on, there's some drugs you can take. There's IUI, mm. which is insemination, which is mm. targeted. So it's like IVF, but, you know. The implantation is done, the insemination is done in you, everything, it's done in the, in the in woman, the not world. outside of the system. Okay. So we did that to start, and then that didn't work, and we're like, okay, let's go to the next step, which is IVF, which is you take the egg and the sperm, sperm and you do and it outside, outside of the system and implant, and yes. then we've done that. And we've done about four, five, maybe six even. We've done lots of different procedures, mm. and, um, you know, and here we are, we're still here. Mm. Mm, that's emotionally what is that like for both of you emotionally it's tiring right because each procedure takes i would say three months from start to finish you have to mm. get stimulated you have to start taking drugs you have to prepare your body then you have the implantation then you have two weeks to wait to see if you're going to get pregnant then if you don't you have to wait for your body to come back down to, to normal, to where mm. it was before you started the process. Mm. So each time you do one of these things, you lose three to four months of time. Mm. 
you know, and then not counting the money that goes into it because IVF mm. is quite expensive. Yeah. So that is very trying mm. on on. So on how the how do you then how do you then jump back onto the bandwagon? Because like you said, you've done about six or so different things. Yeah. How do you where do you get the strength to actually? What are you going to Go do? Back again. You have to start again. You want to have kids, right? Yeah. And this is the process. So it's, I think it's the same thing as if you, if you were doing, you were just trying naturally, mm. right? It's just yeah. that you're doing, a different, you're doing it in a different way. So like I said, I'm very practical. I'm like, okay, let's, let's get back on it. Mm. Sometimes I need a longer time to take a break because mm. it does take a toll on your body. Mm. You can't exercise. You can't, there's so many things you can't do whilst you're planning. So that w time in between, I take mm. longer time to recover. Mm. to start the process again. But then the most important thing, and that is the same thing with everything in life, mm -hmm. it's not how many times you fall, yes. but it's how many times you get up. Yes, it is. You know, so in all of that, what has been the most challenging part of the journey thus far? For me, the most challenging part of the journey is not being able to participate in pregnancy conversations because there's a taboo of, like, where's your own... Right. So that's mm. that for me is difficult. So let's say people are talking about being pregnant. I've been pregnant. We've lost. We've actually lost um, the, the first one and we lost like twins, you know, so we've wow. lost we've lost multiple um, kids or, you know, pregnancies. Mm. So but talking about pregnancies, I want to be in a conversation like, yeah, I know it's tiring. Right. You're in your first trimester. It's tiring. And or whatever I want mm. to contribute. Mm. But mm. I feel like you can't really contribute, you know, because you don't have. Proof of the proof of the pudding, you know, yeah. is not there. So it's like, please don't talk to me. And I'm in a, in a superstitious type of environment, right? Mm. So I don't want to affect anybody's um, story. So I try to just keep quiet, like, you know what? Good luck, yay, you know, without having to contribute into the other conversations that mothers who have kids contribute to, if that makes sense. So that's what's most trying for me. Wow. Um, the other thing is I hate when people try to put pressure like this time next year <laughs> you say this time next year it means you're saying that i have given you three months to <laughs> to start because the pregnancy takes um, nine months right yeah. so this time next year means oh yeah oh, start your start whatever you're doing now but people yeah. say it like it's a prayer like this time next year your yeah. own oh, will happen and i'm just yeah. like mm. or the one that they say where they say they've dreamt about you holding oh, your god, child that's the worst that's the yes. worst everyone has a dream people think they're unique in the dream in nigeria everyone thinks i'm being unique ah i just want to tell you um, it's gonna sound awkward i saw you in my dream i'm just like you're the hundredth person yeah that has seen me in your dream and I think people mean well. Mm -hmm. I think people are thinking about you, but they mm -hmm. don't know how to say it in a real context. So they yeah. use dreams and yeah. visions yeah. to see it. And, I, and people give me visions every month. So wow. everyone thinks they're special, but every month I get a new vision. Wow. You know, that ah, the thing that you want is going to come. I'm just like, <laughs> relax, relax. I'm working on it. Don't worry. I'm, you know. You know, the I'm beautiful active. thing about having this conversation with you, Lisa, is. It's, for me, a breath of fresh air because a lot of the times when this conversation is being had, mm -hmm. it's from a position of, woe is me. Things mm -hmm. aren't going well. Oh, I've been trying to have kids. And whilst that is a real reality... It is. It you know, is. I think with everything in life, it's about your perspective and it's about the way in which you handle each situation, you know. Um, for me... I'm, I'm grateful, I'm, and I, I take pride in everything. So I'm grateful that I can afford IVF. I'm grateful that I was pregnant when I was, you know. I'm grateful for the um, relationship I have with my husband. We're in this together. So, like, each time something happens, it hits both of us, right? We're, we're down. It's, you know, you're disappointed. We have, we have friends who have kids, and we want to be, like, you know, parents mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, I'm alive. You know, um, mm -hmm. I could be in a different situation. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm grateful for everything. And mm -hmm. um, I'm just like, I know it's going to happen. Or I feel mm -hmm. like it's happened. It's just not manifested in that kind of way. Yep. And I'm just waiting for it to happen. So yeah. I'm positive yeah. like that. Like, it's, it's happening. It's, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's just not happened yet. yet. You know? But it and, will happen. Um, yes. And that's how And one of the things you've just said now is you're grateful for the relationship you have with your husband because mm. you're in it together. What is this journey like for him? I think he feels similar to me, um, but he's not the person 
going through it physically, right? But he's mm -hmm. there, he sees me, he sees me bloated, he gives me the injections if you're going through IVF, he's the one who tells me the time, you know, does the injections, injects them into my thighs, he's like, he's, we're in it together, we name kids together, you know, we sit down, we're like, okay, we're going to name this one X, we're going to name this child, blah, blah, blah. And after going through that process together as a family, you mm -hmm. know, and having devastating blow after blow on each try. It's, it's tasking on both of us. All his married friends have kids as well. Mm -hmm. So we're in it to, together, right? Mm -hmm. But he's mm -hmm. like me. We're very, we're very thankful. We're very practical. We're just like, okay, so what do we do next? And how long is it going to take us to get there? We mm -hmm. take our time, recover, and start again. And start again. And start again. Wow. And start again. You talked about alignment. You said something here about you guys name the children together. Mm. He gives you the injections. injections yeah. He's the timekeeper. Yeah. That is alignment. Yeah. Well, we know we know what we want. We're aligned um, on a lot of things. We're aligned on this and how we want to go about this journey. Mm. And um, yeah, um, he's actually. Sometimes I'm like, he's the person. I told the doctors, I'm like, please talk to my husband. He's the guy who, like, you know, we're in this together. Mm. And um, you know, I want him to carry both of us along because mm. we're both in it, right? Mm. He's the one who checks on me and is like, well, you know, have you have you called him back? What's happening? And I'm like, okay, so we're we're it's in a tag the is a tag team in the yeah. in the journey. So yeah. um, I think it's tough on him as well, but you know. You have to keep on moving. You have to keep yeah. on trying. Yeah. And the more you try, the more you have the results. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had gone to one doctor who, when we narrated our entire um, fertility history, mm -hmm. said, like, that's the history of someone who'd been married for, like, 12 years. Wow. When we, when we went blow by blow of all the things we had done mm. and how many times we had tried and mm. all the different um, permutations, it was just like... Only six years, you guys have gone through a lot. And we, don't, we didn't see it like that. We're just mm. like, okay, let's just go. Let's try. Next mm. step, next step, mm. next step. Mm. So we just keep, mm. keep going. Mm. The right attitude. Yeah, next step. I, that's how I feel. Right attitude. That is awesome. That is really awesome. And would you say in, in, in between then and now, would you say you've learned anything new? I have learned that a lot of people, a lot of people are going through the same thing. Um, I'm very vocal about it if you ask me, which is why I don't like the vision. If you ask me direct, I will mm -hmm. tell you. Mm -hmm. It's difficult, we're trying. And what once I say, I find that a lot of people open up to me and like, I'm going through the same thing, I went through the same thing. Or that's happened to me even more times. People have had mm -hmm. IVF more times than I've had IVF, you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. successful, not successful. Mm -hmm. And so I learned that there's so many people going through this, it's like a club that mm. you don't know about mm. until you enter and you're like, oh, yeah. there are many of us in this club, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's what I learned. My uncle came to my house two days ago and he was just telling me about his story. And this is like my dad's brother. And I was just like, wow, you went through the same thing? Like we wow. never really communicated, you yeah. know, we never, never really spoke about it, right? And his journey. And I was just like, everyone's going through a version of something. Mm. Um, I, I feel most married couples would have gone through a bout of um, miscarriage or something that didn't work. Mm. Um, but we don't really talk about it as much, mm. you know. Mm. That, is, that is so true because you just said your uncle, yeah. you know, not even a distant <coughs> uncle, your dad's brother, yeah. went through a similar experience in yeah. his time. 15 years, he was saying. And you had no clue. I didn't even think about it. You know, I just, he has kids now, you yeah. know, I, I didn't think, yeah. and they're young kids. I didn't, I didn't think about it. Yeah. But we don't, we just don't talk a lot. We don't talk enough. Do you think it would make a difference if we talked more about these things? I think so. I think it, it would make a difference if we spoke more. Like if, um, if we're more open about it, mm. I would advise younger people to start early. Mm. I know mm. we're That's the same thing Dr. Tony said. Yeah, I would advise young people to start early. I know we're in, a, in an age where people have kids later in life, you do your career and, and then you um, face in a family life. But if you're not going to have kids early, I would advise you to freeze your eggs, um, you know, have a plan, mm. right? Because mm. there's a trajectory in how it works. So if you're young and you know you want to have kids and you're not mm. ready yet, just have a, have a plan. Check um, your AMH. So check... What's AMH? 
um, is the count of how many ovaries you have. That's right. what I think. That's how I, I would explain it. Dr. Tony might be better with that. <laughs> but it's your, it's, your, it's your ovary count, right? So okay. just check, like, how many, how many do you have left? And, and then harvest. And then just know that when you're ready, you can do IVF, right? Yeah. Later in life. But so we to don't speak. get told those types. We don't get given that type of advice. And it would be so cool for us to get that type of advice. But because a lot of people are marrying later. Yes, that's just what's happening. You know, mm. and I've, I've also been through IVF. I've done two IVFs. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I found most shocking mm. when I started the journey was the fact that my eggs mm. are the same age as me. Yeah. As opposed to a man's sperm that renews every 48 to 72 hours, I think. Yeah. But then your eggs as a woman is latent when you're born. It's the when same. When you go to yeah. puberty. It's so so true. no matter how old you are, your eggs are the same they're age. With you. So they're not as, as fresh. fertile, as, fertile, as, fer yeah. as fresh as they would be. Yeah. So if we had, if, if, if you had known earlier. Had, yes. You yeah. know, if, we had, if, if people talked about reproductive you know, the journey to reproduction, and they yeah. talked about these things, yeah. people would know that, okay, well, if you're not really interested in marriage, like you said, freeze your eggs. Freeze your eggs. You know, and then yeah. go back to them when you're ready. Yeah. I think, that's, I think that's key. That's my number one advice to every, like, every young girl who's thinking about it and is not ready yet, mm -hmm. you know, have a plan. You know, just go to the hospital, check, see what's happening. But isn't that scary, though? For some people, if you now start saying, okay, I'm going to start checking all these things, doesn't I that think, become I, a scary thing? No, I think it's a check like any other check, hmm. right? We, you, we have to reproduce, right? It's like a factor of life, unless you don't want to. And if, that's why I said if it's part of your plan to have kids, then it should be part of your checkup. I, th I think it should be part of your checkup. Mm, I see what you mean. Mm. So if you were to advise, or you, you've already said one of the things, um, but I'd, I'd like you to repeat that as well. If you were to advise other couples in a similar situation, what are the three most important things you would tell them? In this case, you can have four. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to advise another couple, um, I would say um, they should be on the same page as to what they want to do. How they want to do the, how they want to do it. Alignment is to, is completely important. There's so many different um, aspects. There's so many different steps, right? There's adoption. There's surrogacy. There's IVF. There's just trying. There's a time method. There's so many different things. And I think the conversation needs to be had to align on what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and once you align, go in it gung ho and knowing that it might not work the first time or the second time or the third time, mm -hmm. you know. So it's just about being on the same page. And um, I would say start early. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, start early. Unless you're like a 20-year-old couple, you know, and, you know, I'll say maybe take some time. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'll say start early. Start early. Start early. Is there anything else you would tell couples or even single people who would one day become couples? I think I've said it. I think it's all around the same thing, you know. Yeah. Freeze Alignment, your eggs, freeze you know. Eggs, be aligned. Um, be be on the same page as your partner, and um, start as early as possible. Wow! Thank you so so much, Lisa. Thank you for having this me. This has it has really been very very enlightening and in such a new and fresh way. Thank you. And it just brings it to. It's a part of life. It is a part of life. And it's all about how you, how you approach it and your perspective. Yeah. So I really, 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 really am thankful that you come here and you shared your story with us today. As you know, we're rooting for both of you. Thank you. You know, and Lisa, you guys have so many godchildren. We do. You we know, do. And... I would love to be one of your godchildren. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll be one of my kids. I'll take so care thank of you it. so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having thank me. You. You're welcome. You. Next with us is our fitness expert, Dolly Phillips. Hello, everyone. 
everyone and welcome to the fitness section of today's show. Today we are working with weights. Now, if you don't have any weights at home, that is fine. Just look for a big bottle of water or anything you can hold firmly. That would work. As always, my name is Dolly Phillips and I'm working with Elvis, Elvis in the house. All right, so our very first workout is going to be a lift up and down. That's it. Up and down. And your time starts now. Let's go. We're going up. Take it down. Woo. Up and down. Up and down. Very good. Come on, you're doing so well. Awesome. Now, remember to push your bum away from your knees. So push your bum back so you protect your knees. Come on, we have three seconds more. One more, fit the time, down, yes, and we're done. Next one, we're going to do a reverse lunge. We're stepping back, then we'll push it up and down. Are we ready? Let's go, back, up and down. Now make sure you're balanced. We're alternating those legs and together. Step back, up and down, step back. Now don't worry too much about going down too low. Just do what you can, very good. Now, we're going for a snatch. Everybody, this position. We take it down, down, and up. Beautiful, down, and up. Now, my hand is out here for extra balance. All right? Yes. Now, remember, we're using our left hand now. So when we're doing it all over again, you're going to use which hand? The right hand, Absol absolutely. Good, one more, 50 time, yes, awesome. Now, we're going to stay in a sumo pos squat position. Turn your feet out, and we're sending the weights to the left. Let's go, twist. Now, this looks quite easy, but you're really working those abs. Now, if you feel any pain in your knees, open your legs wider. That's all you need to do. Make sure your knees are behind your toes, all right? Ah, this is a hard one, but we can do it. We're going to turn to the side, get down to the floor, renegades. I will do the easy version, and Elvis will do the harder version. Keep your knees down, pull those weights up. Very good. Take your time. Awesome. Now, the tendency is to stay here. Don't stay here. Push your pelvis down to the floor and work. And we're done. Round two. Again. We're sending it up and down. Are we ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. Up, all the way down. Good. Lovely. Five more seconds. Up. Three, two, one. And time. Good job. Reverse lunge. Remember, we're stepping back. Left leg is going back, and time starts now. Let's go, push up and down. Elvis, wait for me, and up, that's it. Again, and up, that's it. Step back, and up, good job. This is working those legs, working your glutes, and with the weights in your hands, is working your arms and your back. You see, this is a full body workout. One more, up. And time. Good job. Weight in your right hand now, remember. We're doing those snatches, yes? Let's go down. And up. Good. Remember, my hand out here is just for extra balance. Just to make sure my body is aligned. Three more, two, and one. Time. Lovely. Sumo squat position. Remember, knees behind the toes. We're rotating. Left side first, let's go. Woo. We're working those abs here. Come on, move. There we go. Don't slouch. Don't look left or right. Keep your focus forward. Keep it forward. That's it. So you don't get dizzy. Five seconds left. Very good. Almost there. Three. Two, one, time. Renegades. 
Let's get down. Knee push-up position for me, full push-up position for Elvis. And lift, one, come on, push. Don't rush this one. Your body should be streamlined. Only your arms working. Squeeze those abs tight. Good. Pull it up to about the armpits. Come on. That's it. We're working here. One more. And time. Awesome. All right. Quick stretch. We can put the weights down now. In. And out. And in. And out. Two more. In. And out. One more. And out. Legs together, send those hands down to the floor. Touch your toes, drop your head. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bend your knees, roll up slowly. Very good, hands on your hips. Let's stretch to the left side. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Other side, again. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's look side to side. Rotate, come on. Ah, oh, we've worked hard. We need to release those hips, the waist. One more, and relax. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's workout, and we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>